Looks like there's several there. What's up, my man? Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. Look at, I can't get over how Rico Suave you are. <laughs> I'm serious, you. No hair. Dude, it's, it's, uh, it looks great on you. So, everybody, I just want to welcome Neil Patel to the Shumani Show, Skills to Pay the Bills. Neil, I started doing this, and it's been awesome, man. I really love doing video casting. Awesome. I haven't done yeah. that, but it sounds like it's good. Yeah, it's good. And also, we have, um, I want to shout out to our sponsor, uh, Beats by Dre, who we're going to give away uh, three pairs of headphones this month alone. So anyone who asks a question that we read, we will enter into a drawing to give this away. So stay tuned for that giveaway. And um, we have some other really awesome sponsors coming up, which I said that last time, but Quick Sprout is going to be one of them, right? Is that, I didn't, maybe not. I don't, I don't I know. know. I didn't. <laughs> You're such a cheap ass. But no, Neil Neil is a really good friend of mine. We go back many years. I uh, I, I actually found a photo today that was way long time ago, SCS 2005. And I think that was when I first met you. And um, man, you have come a long way. Um, not only because I don't want to sound, uh, what's the word? Um, not, not like, Condescending, that's the word. Um, I don't want to sound condescending at all, but you know, meeting you then to watching you grow and becoming this yeah. a superstar. I mean, you're an absolute rock star, especially in the world of venture capital, branding, all of that. I mean, from this little energetic young man to the superstar you are now, it's been a, a, really a pleasure to uh, call you my friend. Well, thank you. You've always been a good friend to me as well. So I appreciate we actually, that. We've actually first met at PubCon. It was in the, the Marriott in uh, next to PubCon. And I remember you were trying to get me to try calamari. My first time ever. Do you remember? Wow. I do not remember that. I remember I remember you coming up and saying, I have a, a ACS, SEO. And I, I'm trying to remember... Was that when I brought the girl from Hooters? No, that was different. I was in Nebraska before that time, and I shocked her with the gum. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to bring up old school stuff, because now, now you're this. You call that. Now that now that you're this pimp dad guru, I I didn't want to know if you wanted to bring up stuff like that. So I, <laughs> no, I mean, because it's like I I remember the Neil that I taught how to clank beer bottle tips on. Yes. Oh my gosh, you you were such a riot. And you did it to Danny Sullivan and everyone who didn't even drink beer. You're like, let me give you a beer. And you clank. And then <laughs> that was so oh my God, we had such fun times. I miss I miss those days, you know, when the whole gang was together. It was really, really fun times. Then they had to go form that blue glass train rack and there went the whole gang. So anyway, man, what have you been up to? Not much. Just same old stuff. Blogging, still working on Crazy Egg as my main company. That's mainly it. Awesome. And so, um, yeah, sorry, me and Neil just kind of jumped into reminiscing and old school stuff. So um, for those that don't know, I, I first met Neil because he had his SEO company. But So, Neil, do you just want to kind of take us through just a brief summary? I know I always get asked to do that, and so I kind of buzz through it as well but do you mind just for people who may not be familiar with you just kind of giving us a start from the bottom now you're here sure uh, so I started in the SEO realm my first website was a job board I paid a few marketing agencies to get me traffic they, they sucked I got no results had no more money left I learned it myself got pretty decent yeah. at it and uh, I'm the site because I didn't know how to monetize but I knew how to drive traffic I started a consulting firm I struggled to get clients uh, eventually I figured it out, but I remember the first time I met Jeremy, he was like, so what are you working on? I'm like, I can get rankings, but I don't know how to get the customers. And he's like, the customers are the easiest part. And I'm like, I don't know how to get the customers, but I just know how to drive the traffic. And you were giving me tips. You also brought me over to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. You taught me about affiliate marketing years ago. That's right. I met your wife. She brought um, me nice warm socks because I remember telling her my feet are always cold. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, and since then I got into the software realm, I hated consulting. I still hate it to this day. 
It's like if you can grow someone else's website or business, you might as well just square your own. Yeah. And I still have been sticking up for all those years. Yeah, for sure. It, and yeah, and so with um, you're still involved with Kiss Metrics. Uh, I left two years ago. I still have shares, not much, under ten percent. Okay. Yeah, that was. I mean, I love Crazy. Crazy Egg was so. I still don't think it has competitors. I mean, it has comparable, but as far as like a ease of use and, and all that, Crazy Egg for those of you out there who haven't seen it, it's it's a great tool for measuring, really giving you a ton of insights on what your users do. How'd you come up with the idea for that? We're doing the pay-per-click for General Motors, and when we were optimizing their landing pages, they were telling us, hey, we're getting all this traffic, but we don't understand why some people are converting and why others aren't. So we're trying to optimize our landing page, and we're like, it would be really awesome if there was a tool that actually showed us where people click and where they don't, so we could figure out what changes to make in order to generate more leads from. And that's how we came up with Crazy Egg. Wow, that's awesome. But I mean, that did you raise money to start that, or did you just hire a bunch of people and get after it? I hired a bunch of people, get after it, self-funded the whole thing. Well, I mean, did you ever raise money for Crazy Egg? We try, no one would fund us. Right, but you did for Kiss Metrics. Yeah, Kiss Metrics came out of Crazy Egg. One of the VCs said, hey, you should spin off Kiss Metrics, make it a separate company instead of calling it Crazy Egg uh, 2.0. That's how Kiss Metrics came about. That is very interesting. You know, I didn't ever even knew that. I, th I thought you guys had raised capital for Crazy Egg. And um, yeah, that's interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. And I, I remember you did some stuff like you were, did you, were you, you were kind of brokering out Gad and stuff or you were doing some stuff with him um, for Textlink ads maybe? I don't remember Both exactly. Events at one time. It was a good gig. I think Patrick was giving me 10 or 15 grand a month to represent uh, Textlink ads. You know, Gavin is, um, there's only been two people I've ever formed a company with that turned out to be the people I thought they would be. And um, you you maybe have or haven't been down that road, but I've probably done it five times now. And I mean, I'm not talking like Delanave, you know, because he's my boy and I've always known him. Um, when I'm talking like Patrick Gavin is one of them people who, he was my original partner with auction ads. And then when TextLink ads was purchased by MediaWiz, you know, he said to me, hey, shoot, you know, I can't own this because it's, you know, whatever with MediaWiz, so I'm gonna give my thing with them. And, I, and we didn't have anything on paper, you know, and I was like, yeah, not gonna give that, you know, to a, a billion dollar company. <laughs> so I wasn't really excited about that, but we, we worked on stuff and then he he um, remained in a role that, um, was amazing. I mean, was was really one of the key driving forces to that company being as successful as it wasn't as rapidly as it grew, just to have a, a good guy who keeps the ship running. So I, I love PG. He's great. Yeah, he's done well. His new company has been crushing it, the Education Legion. Man, he, the thing I like about him, he's he's just, um, and I you meet these guys, and, and your brother-in-law is one of those guys. You know, they're just smart business guys. And then, and then you got guys like you that are the talent, right? So I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I try to be the talent. <laughs> fuck off. You're the talent. So <laughs> yeah, because with me, it's always like, you know, I'm, I'm always like, I, I tried to be the talent and the businessman and I'm not a good businessman. Um, but you know, actually, dude, I've got some consulting gigs, um, that, actually really like it's only like it's only a couple um and i'm really careful like who i take i really only want the companies are gonna pay me a lot and i never have to talk to like those are the ones that i'm looking for so yeah if there's any watching this i think neil would probably pick up the phone if you called as well so i only have one client right now and i've had only one client for a long time like they're the easiest company ever and funny enough it's google and you would think that would be hard but like they never hit me up <laughs> well we have um one client I, I cannot name because um, they could be watching. Uh, they haven't talked to us in two years and they pay us thousands every month. Um, but they do call us every once in a while. It's been two years, but, and um, they're a very large uh, entity. They are a government entity actually, um, have a lot of money and you know, this is our government at work. They pay for a lot of things they don't really use. So um, yeah, they're great clients for us. All right. So, how I mean, like you're you're crazy egg or you're crazy 
your crazy ride um, in this to me um, may not be that crazy to you, but uh, it's been self branding and it's, it's one of those interesting things. And I didn't realize like how I knew that you were always very good at it. And I saw it coming when you started, when you did a lot of volunteer work for TechCrunch and a lot of these other companies. And I don't know that it was always volunteer, but you got your foot in the door with them. And then we're able to do case studies on how you really know what the, you're doing. And I think that really, I, I saw that going on and I'm talking about from afar. From what I saw going on, I was like, man, that was that was really smart. And then, you know, just what you did with Quick Sprout and branding that. And now it's you're just it's just it blew me away when I was presenting to I think I might have told you this to the Nebraska Angels to raise money for my PAR program, which everyone told me was a horrible idea, including your brother in law, who like really laid it into me about it. And I didn't I was very unsuccessful raising money. And um Basically, because I, I mean, my general thing was, you know, hey, I haven't lost money in 12 years. I've sold two companies and or six companies, two for a lot. And um, just give me money and get out of my way. And that doesn't resonate with investors very well. Yeah, it doesn't at all. <laughs> but you're now an investor. I haven't done too much. I've done like maybe 30 or so startups that I've invested in. Oh, uh, that's it. Just just 30. Wow. Some, have done like, some people have done like a few hundred. But I'm far from, I don't do too much investing. I invest more in my own stuff. Like, I believe in branding. I spend more money on my personal brand than anything else. And my big spent expenditure right now is international expansion. Like, there's no competition. There is no, so I'm trying to brand myself as the next version of uh, David Ogilvy, right? Like, the new digital version of it. There's no one in Brazil. There's no one in the Spanish market. There's 400 plus million people who speak Spanish. There's over 200 or roughly 200 million people who speak Portuguese. Like all these markets are untapped. Right. Wow. I don't know if we lost. I think we might have lost Neil there for a second. I think he's uh, – okay, I can see you. I can see you. Now, are you – when you're trying to brand yourself like that, do you have your content translated or are you, are you on the uh, – on the um, gosh, the Rosetta Stone, you got that going on, picking up Spanish or – yeah, so I'm picking up Spanish. Can you hear me now and see me? Yeah, okay, we can, I can watch you. Yeah. I'm like in my dad's house. They have slow <laughs> Are you you're in Cali? I'm in Cali for once. Nice. Because you call Vegas home now, right? Uh, yeah, I live in Seattle again, but I'm also oh, in Vegas. Okay. okay. But uh, yeah, so I, I've been expanding to all of Latin America, which I'll do more towards the end of this year. I haven't expanded there yet. Uh, Brazil, I've already expanded into. I've been spending a ton there. Germany, I partnered with Marcus, so we start May first. Uh, for all the Arabic countries, I start sometime in uh, May as well. But yeah, I've just been trying to grow. And I, like you said, you know, you pick up Rosetta Stone, learn a new language, or partner with the locals, and just try to expand. So, have you picked up Spanish? I've always known a bit of Spanish because we learned it in high school. I grew up in California. Oh yeah, that's so. Especially Southern California. Yes, that's, uh, definitely. I was. I've been spending time um, in San Diego. Uh, been there quite quite a bit recently, and um, yeah, there's a lot of Spanish going on there. So yeah, that's really interesting. I have a a friend of ours. We went on a um, a yacht trip. There was me and John Chow and some other marketers, and there was a girl from Chile there who was on my last video cast. And she was talking about how, how the market there and how I should take my products there and subtitle them in Spanish and, you know, and do this. And, and kind of what you were saying is that the market is wide open, you know, down there. So maybe we should team up on that. We can like, yeah, there's we'll no see. competition. Like in Brazil, I'm spending a hundred thousand us dollars and it goes a long way. One, there's a recession. So for every dollar I spend here, it's like 3.5 there plus it's dirt cheap. Like everything is pennies on the dollar. Have Have you been there yet? Yeah. Okay. What do you, What are you spending? So you, you're spending a hundred thousand dollars. What are you spending it on? Translation of the content. A release of free SEO analyzer because there's no real marketing tools in Portuguese or there's not too many of them. Uh, hiring a PR agency. 
hire uh, locals on the ground over there to connect with all like the marketing blogs and do deals where they already have email lists and they'll do blasts to tell their audiences subscribe to mine. They'll also tell people to like, hey, join my Facebook group, also do ads within that region to get more Facebook followers as well. But doing a bit of all that kind of stuff, it's a great way to generate traffic within that community or country. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, we we have a lot of it, it. I mean, gosh, it is. It's such. I believe it is such an untapped market, and it's weird because you don't. You haven't seen. I guess it's true because you haven't seen any. With SEO is a little different because you would have guys come up from Mexico that were super good. Um, wasn't the guy that almost burnt WordPress to the ground? Wasn't he from Mexico? I don't know if you can remember that when I he don't. came in. Oh, the guy that oh gosh, what was his name? He um he convinced Matt Mullenweg to let him uh, monetize some of the WordPress dot uh, org um, sites, and so he like Matt went on this like uh, I don't know something in Haiti, and while he was gone, oh his name was Nacho something, Nach I know it was Nacho something, and Greg Bozer used to talk to Matt about him all the time. And uh, anyway, so he put all this like fen fen shit on there and like all this like really sketchy stuff and then everyone outed it and they all blamed Matt Mullenweg and he was just out of the country at the time. So <laughs> I can't believe you don't remember that. That was uh, that was a crazy time. Um, anyway, awesome. So you're venturing out into these other areas and you want to be like, like the C-3PO and the little Ewoks where they're like, like that kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about? Kind of. Well, I don't want to. The funny thing is, I don't want to be known. I just want the big corporate contracts. So if no one knew who I was, but I got all the big corporate contracts, I would be happy. Okay. But so you you don't really. Do you want to do the consulting then with them? Or is it just like, what, what are these contracts for? Uh, software. So we may do deals with ad networks where. We help optimize the landing pages for the largest publishers using our software. And in essence, we're just giving our software away for free to all their largest clients, right? Right. And I, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, to spend a hundred grand, and if that can brand you to be the man in that whole region, I mean, that's that's a pinch in the bucket, um, you know, to what that would be worth. Yeah, even the speaking fees. When I went down to Brazil, I think I got paid a fraction of it, but it was still a decent amount of money. It was in the five figures. Just in speaking contracts alone, I could make the money back. Plus, I'm not spending a hundred grand right away. I wish I could dump in like a hundred grand today and just make it grow faster, but it doesn't work that way. I've been doing it since November, and I probably spent like sixty something thousand out of a hundred thousand dollar budget. Right. And so you um like all right, so you're merging into other markets. I mean our are you looking? You're you're totally in this for personal branding and corporate contract stuff. Like you're not looking to invest in any companies there or anything like that. No, just looking for corporate <laughs> contracts and branding. I've been doing a bit of investing myself, but it's it's not like real, like what you are into and stuff like that. It's more like, um, like uh, I've had a couple different instances where I've done this, where um, most of the time it's just funding people. Like, so, you know, like these guys have this Facebook campaign that's killing it, but they can only spend, you know, a hundred, five hundred dollars a day because they don't, you know, the, the turnaround time on some of this is they don't have the cash flow. So I'll cash flow it and then we just split the profit. So it's not really a, an investing thing per se, but it's something that's gone well for me. And um, as long as the right controls are in place. But I mean, you know, we scaled up. Uh, some guys out of Denver to on average about $70,000 a day um, of my money and did a good margin on that. So that's kind of like the stuff I've been looking into and, and I, I, I am open to other things, but I bring it obviously, and you, it, you do as well. And I just don't think you want to be that hands on, but I could be wrong. But like, you know, like I love like starting a company and growing it. And then once it gets to a point, I don't really like it anymore. Like once it involves all this other stuff, I mean, I can like auction ads was perfect for me. We took it from zero and to 25,000 publishers, you know, almost 4 million a month in revenue within four months. And I, I was, I mean, it was just getting too big for me at that point. And so 
you know, it was I was great that we sold it. It pretty much spoiled me um, for <laughs> forever because that one was perfect. But um, at the same time, like me as an investor, I would I would want to play a very active role as an investor and contribute money, you know, for things, but kind of more like the profit, you know, model a little bit more where actually I just, I pitched Bravo an idea called double or nothing where, you know, uh, I have some friends there and I, I said, you know, I'm sure you get all these great ideas every day, but I've got an idea where I would take my team of Facebook people, graphics people, you know, all these guys, programmers, whatever, go into any business online, offline, we would double their profits within within 60 days, double their profits. And if we did, then we get 30% in the equity in the company. And I'm still working out exactly how that work. And if we didn't, then we get nothing and everything they made, whatever's for free. I like so the concept. The question is, is it, it's worth it as a business owner. They have nothing to lose. What's the worst that happens? You don't yeah. make, they spend no money. Yeah, that's that's the interesting part of it is is it like to me and you that makes a hundred percent sense because if someone would come to me and see what I got and say, hey, I'll double the profit on this and you give me this equity and um, and also like I would take only thirty percent of what was like like let's say they're at you know a hundred grand in profit a month and I take that to two fifty or two hundred right. So I would only ask for 30% of the increase over that $100,000 baseline. So that's like a no brainer. I've actually pitched this to local companies here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and not one of them has taken me up on it. And I'm just like, really? Like really, really, really? I mean, I know on the internet I can pick up some and probably even people watching this, I'm probably going to get a bazillion people that will want to do it. But um, yeah, if you're making $2 a month, I'm not really interested. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I mean like if, if it's a good fit, I, I would like to do it just to do it on, I mean, anyway, and just, you know, fucking film it on YouTube. And I think that it, it's kind of like the profit, but on an online way of just, there's just such an opportunity that a lot of people have such great products and stuff and branding, but they're just missing the marketing. And so, you know, to put me and my team of people in place, it's just, Boom. No, it's smart. And these companies who aren't taking you up on it, they're foolish because they're staying the same size. It's like if you take someone from a hundred grand a month of profit to two hundred, all that do is pay you thirty grand a month. That's right. a good deal. They made an extra seventy thousand dollars a month on top. They're now right. one seventy out of a hundred. Doesn't make sense for them to say no. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, they're absolutely. And that's why I have skin in the game forever, right? Because I want to keep that profit up. So, you know, my team would just make sure all the camera, you know, because usually you need a good 60 days or so to get, you know, landing pages, you know, good to go, get your Facebook stuff good to go, you know, your email marketing side good to go, um, you know, any other copy, graphics, whatever, which I would all take on at my expense. And then once it's set, I don't want to say it's set and forget by any means, but, you know, you, you know, you know, where your stuff should be and all that stuff. So a lot of it's, you know, retargeting after the initial stuff and, and whatever, and, and this should be good to go from then on. So then, you know, we focus on the next one, keep people maintaining that one anyway. So that's, that's the general model I had. And I was thinking about just doing that anyway. There was, um, do you know Scott Richter? That name is familiar. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. He had media breakaway affiliate.com. You'd know him if you saw him. He was on the Colbert show. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, he, um, he has a, uh, adult gentleman's club in Denver and he took this thing and he bought it for next to nothing. He renovated it. And because of his internet marketing skills, um, that are amazing. It is, I believe it was the, Top one of the top five biggest distributors of alcohol, biggest sellers of alcohol in la all of last year. And when I was there, um, then like three months ago, Chris Brown, the Chris Brown, was filming his music video inside of there. I mean, it's wow. just it's, it's a bad. I mean, he built a great place, but he did. He's done. He has a, a Facebook group, um, or I'm sorry, Facebook fan page, which has all their events and everything like that. And he does, you know, because obviously he can't advertise on Facebook, but they have people very 
the thing is, is they give people like, you know, incentives to fan them on Facebook and whatever. And their friend CEO who likes Platinum 84, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, sorry, my, my, uh, my, uh, my dude, my kid's 10 now. And she's, uh, you know, she's got, of course, her iPhone 6S Plus, and so she's she's trying to call me right now. Um, yeah, so anyway, I mean, it's, it's amazing the, the opportunity that exists for these offline businesses that are doing great, where if you just, I mean, it's just, they just don't comprehend it. So, yeah. Anyway, there was a, there is a, a guy here locally named Jay Wilkinson who um, is a, incredibly smart business guy and also thinks the world of you. And I mean, I'm telling you, there's, I, I don't know if you realize the reach and branding that you have. I'm in BFE Lincoln, Nebraska, where you came before. And, you know, back here when, when I bought Killis and my Hummer, um, when we, when you came before and, um, jumping over you, that. <laughs> now, now you're like, you you would command a huge audience here. I mean, a huge audience. We should have an event here around you. And um, you do you do well. I mean, like the VCs around here would just like foam at the mouth if if they thought you were coming here. I don't know. It's if they'd foam at the mouth, but I'm always open to doing events. Well, I can tell you that you know it was just funny because I had you listed on my like board of advisors, you know, for raising money. I don't even know if I asked you if that was cool. I just went with it. Doesn't matter. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like I think me and you, we've gone back and forth about, hey, can I get a quote from you, like put on this page? And it's always been like, yeah, just put whatever you want me to. Say. <laughs> yeah, pretty so, much. Yeah. So it's funny because I had you on that slide, and they were like, oh, Neil Patel. Yeah, I know him. And I'm like, oh, how do you know him? Oh, he was at Big Omaha or something like that, and, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know him. Like, I know, I know, like, I know, know him. Like, it's just, it was just, like, funny, because I'm like, okay, you saw him at a conference and you said hi. And then it's like, we're, we're I'm teaching you how to freak, you're, you know, we're shocking each other with electric gum 10 years ago, you know, and all kinds of immature bullshit that we, I mean, the, and the one pictures I sent you from the TechCrunch event, that that's just hilarious. That one where was. We, where we, yeah, we pitched money for that thing. I, I would love to. I was going to ask you if, if I could write about that sometime as a, as a, um, I think I, I did talk about it as an April Fool's Day joke once, but um, it's, a, whatever. It's, it's, it's so funny that we actually have the name back because people are like, I tell them the story and I'm like, yeah, I was at this tech crunch event. We came up with this company just to pitch people because we just didn't give a shit. And, and um, so we came up with this and, and they're like, you're so full of it, you whatever. And I'm like, okay, look. And then I show them the pictures with our name badges with the side of it. <laughs> it is a very funny story. We had a lot of fun. So you remember how we tried to raise the money to buy out the Michael Jackson home? And turn yeah, it into the never <laughs> 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 okay so all right well you're okay with it can i i'll just say it real quick yeah go for it so we were all sitting there brainstorming and came up with like we were just like okay this this event is all around raising money for stuff and it's like you know we don't we don't really raise money and i think you were you were actually involved with some with kiss metrics at that time and doing some stuff and so but you were like yeah i'll pretend i'm the indian c plus plus programmer and, and I will pitch them. And so I was pitching them the concept of lever, neverlaid.com, like never had sex, neverlaid.com. And we were talking, we, we were pitching them because we wanted enough money to buy the Michael Jackson Neverland Ranch. With, he was still alive at this time, I think. No, he passed and away. Did he, did he die? Passed. Yeah, he recently passed away. Yeah. I remember the pitch, we'd be like, you know, rest his soul. And then we were just like, we want to turn it into the Neverland Ranch and Neverlaid Ranch. And yeah. we're like, marketing, we're like, oh yeah, we're, and, and we do it. I was doing Indian accent. I remember telling them, I was just like, oh, I want to target all the engineers like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so wow. epically funny. That was so. I mean, didn't I pitch like Randy Zuckerberg on it? I mean, it was like, <laughs> I mean, it was like the founder of the Facebook fund, like Mark Zuckerberg's sister. Um, notice how I got the picture up there of me and Mark before we started Facebook together. Can you see it up there? I can see it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't. 
by the way, start Facebook with Mark, but um, that was the twins. I should have been one of those twins, but um, yeah. So yeah. And I know you, it's so, it's so funny, man. You see the guys from our group, um, how some of them have real, I mean, some of them have fizzled out to nothing and, but a couple of them have, you know, really gone like, look at Hendrickson. My gosh. Yeah. He's done well. Man, it's just amazing. Like I up at Microsoft now. Smart guy yeah. like a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. He we I was talking to him about this I think I had an idea for, put it on angel.co and you know, and it was funny because one of the things he's like, dude, get get Patel to get a syndicate together and razz this thing up and if he likes it. And he was like, Or if you know Tim Ferris, get him on there. Or if you know Jason Calcanis, get him on there, you know, and I was like yeah, you know, and he got me all riled up for like an hour, and then I came to reality. I think I might have texted you about that, and then I think I texted you, "Hey, do you have time to talk? I want to talk to you about something." And you're like, "Yeah, sure." And then I and then I didn't. I was like, "Yeah, not that's not a good idea." Like after I thought about it, I was even gonna bug you about it. But um, yeah, it's been interesting, and I you know I started that I after I sold Par Program, I was like, "Okay, I'm I, I have learned my lesson." having a real company with employees is just not for me. I, I've moved back. I was in the basement. Now I'm upstairs, which I actually like a lot better because it's less isolated. And, um, you know, and it was just like, uh, I was like, you know, okay, I'm going to be semi-retired and I'm just going to go back to blogging and doing little affiliate shit here and there and having a really fun time. At it. And then this whole blog ninja thing, I started for fun and did everything myself and it did a bunch of money. And then, Got myself back into having a bunch of employees all of a sudden, so um, we'll see where that goes. But yeah, it's it's um, I really would. I just I just bought a new uh, Corvette Z06 with the Z07 package, so it's like the first sports car that I've ever had, and um, I kind of went balls out. So I have to be be careful with that. But I mean, yeah, I just I, I'm I'm pretty comfortable right now to where I just kind of enjoy like doing these video casts, and we've got some great sponsors, and um, the Beats thing was huge, obviously, and awesome. uh, yeah, it's super cool. And that's like you know I've done Webmaster Radio for ten years, and uh, I just had these sponsors that wanted video, and so um, you know because they've got products and stuff, and they want you know their little thing and video and. Um, doing like when I edit this and put it up, I'll, I'll put some inserts in between there. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it was, I was like, gosh, you know, but I actually turned down 10 grand a month. Um, podcast one offered me 10 grand a month to start, um, doing my radio, moving it to there from webmaster radio. And I said, yeah, you know, but, but I had to meet all these obligations and I was like, yeah, you know, it's just webmaster radio is just easy and it made a lot of sense for a lot of time, but you know, these offers were just, I can't pass them up. So, and this is easy, like doing a hangout, you know, YouTube does everything for you. It quick, quick and easy. And doing it through webinar jam is really awesome because you can do some really cool stuff um, with a lot of the other stuff. So I really enjoy it. Um, I know you, you do a lot of podcasts and stuff like just as a, a guest, you like that? I get so many requests every single week. Like I'll do roughly like three or four of them. You know, I, I never turn one down. It's good press. Yeah. I mean, like, it's so crazy. A lot of them are just, I mean, I remember back in those days where you would go to someone you looked up to and, you know, hit them up and hope they, I mean, I do that now. Like I emailed Mark Cuban and was like, Hey, I had an old email for him. Um, which I assume is still right. Cause it's at his Mavericks, um, domain. And I said, Hey, I don't know if you remember me. Um, but you know, I'd love for you to come on my show. And he was like, yeah, don't remember you, but let's see if we can make it work. And I was like, Oh, what? And, um, Anna, who's listening now. And, um, she said, uh, who's this Mark Kuban guy? And I was like, well, oh. I thought that was hilarious anyway. So, we, um, so like, you know, so I, I just, you know, if you, Contact me to do a big guest on your show. I, I love doing that stuff. And and the pro my problem is that I talk too much. Nah, you do a good job overall. You know what we do, which has worked well? One of my biz dev guys, because I get so many inquiries, he fields most of them first from all the people I don't know. And we get pretty email blasts from him. 
So I'll go on, and in exchange, I'll do a dedicated email blast for whatever. I don't know what they have on blast, but it tends to work. That's good. That's good. We did one dot com blast out to a thousand people. I just had to turn my light real quick because I noticed that I was fading out. Um, now I'm all whited out. Whatever, this will work. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome, and it's a great way to. I mean, I just. You know, I, I just really like to do this kind of stuff, and I really, really enjoy it. And I think for about the last four years, it's been a painful experience for me of trying to do something I really don't like to do but for whatever reason, which is have a bunch of employees. I mean, you are really witnessing me in my best moments of like me and Delanave together were a freaking, we were some freaking ninjas. And it was just me and him and Ty. I had Ty. Forgot about Ty. Mm -hmm. Bum to Dalave. Did he like? He's doing some gym thing, right? Yeah. Um. We parted ways in around 2010 ish, and um, just uh, had different directions and what we should be working on and stuff. And it was after, you know, it was well, probably 2009. It was after auction ads and stuff, and um, you know, we we came out good on that and so you know I think he just he wanted to pursue his passion and had the funds to do so at that time and so we just kind of both agreed that it would part ways and then he you know he opened his own gym and just like you I mean really branded himself so well in that space and his model like I didn't I, I didn't think it was a bad model but I was nervous for him because you know normally the, the model for a gym is to bank on the fact that you know, nobody's going to use the memberships they're paying for. So they oversell them by like, I think it's like 3000% is what a normal gym. Cause if everyone showed up on, that's why if you go to a gym on new year's day, it's, you can't even work out. It's like ridiculous. But then by April, nobody's there. It's a ghost town. So, but he doesn't do that. He only charges you to work out with one of the pros there. And it's, it's, you know, it's more money, but I was like, Oh gosh, you know, one thing I know is that no matter how much you work with people, when they actually find out it's actual work involved, not really into it. <laughs> so, um, but he's doing really well. And I think he's expanding to Philadelphia. Um, last time I talked with him, and he might be there now, because I know he's, I saw him selling his house in Minneapolis, but the, but the place there is still there. Because his place is called Movement Minneapolis. And it's, it's really developed this cult following, like this amazing following. And, you know, he still has got his skills, you know, from with, uh, he's got like his infusion stuff done. He's, he's launching like some, you know, little products here and there, but he's doing some great stuff with them. Got a big email list doing his thing. And, um, you know, I'm really happy for him. He got, he's married, like. He's married? Uh, yeah, dude, he's married. He's got a gorgeous wife. And um, she's a fitness, I mean, sh dude, she uh, is a, um, I mean, just, I mean, not only a dime piece, but also just like, I gotta have him on the show, but she's like super, I mean, like she's about as strong as you could imagine, but yet like not too muscular, you know what I mean? She just like, and I've had dinner with them in person and stuff, but there's videos of her like doing these crazy things with all these weights. She's in like, she's like, this like guru in runner's world and for like on it, she does stuff and for like all this other stuff. So she's like, it's really weird, you know? Cause I mean, they're just, they're so good together. I'm so happy for him anyway. So yeah, he's married. So I remember once seeing his home in uh, Minnesota. I never saw it like in person, but on the phone and he was showing it to me and he's, it was a beautiful home probably still is, you know, even though he sold it. And he, I'm like, you got all this for how much? And I was like, this place is amazing. I'm like, everything's so cheap. Yeah, well, and and it's even cheaper here in uh, Nebraska. You should you should roll up sometime, and like I said, we could have a little event here. And I think you'd you'd enjoy because there's there's a lot of they're really trying super hard here to be venture capital people, uh, community and uh, incubator, and we have this one called Huddle, which is doing it's funded and. We've got a company, Nelnet, here, which is, I mean, they're just many, many billion dollars, and they've got a fund that they throw a million bucks all over the place. But they, they hit this one, they hit a home run. Huddle is like, it's amazing. But um, 
Yeah, if you if you come in here, you my house is totally different now. We've added on about a four thousand square foot or so, and then yeah, the pool. It, big house. When I saw your house, it was already big. No pool though. Oh, and it's, the last pictures I saw, you guys first added the pool. I don't know if you expanded at that time, but I know you added the pool, and at the bottom was a shoe money symbol. Yep. Well, we, we've actually expanded twice since then. When I sold auction ads, we put quite a bit into the house. We actually extended the backyard almost 50 feet um, and uh, put in a, a big S pool and all kinds of other stuff. And then we had all of that ripped up, all the concrete and everything, uh, two summers ago. Got a new pool, bigger, and um, new fountains and all that shit. And so a big two story slide for the kids. And I wanted a zip line, like off the roof. Yeah, she wasn't having that. So, <laughs> she wasn't. She wasn't having that. So, Weird doctor. There's no way you're gonna get that. <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen. So, I I got. You know what? I got the Corvette. I'm I'm surprised at that. So, um, it's funny it's because fun. like, you know, I'm one. Of, I know you are too, but I, I'm not a guy that likes to flash a bunch of like for the money we're talking about like 100 grand here or whatever like people don't understand like me and neil both are like neil i remember when you got to seattle you had your apartment pretty much sponsored by people yeah that's right it was free <laughs> I, I forget, like i think i might have sponsored your refrigerator or something i forget what it was but like best the web guys were like doing this and i mean that was you know that was back in the glory days of, of i've lost touch with those guys like the best of web guys and those other guys, but yeah, um, for the most part, what I'm trying to say is that, I mean, I'm fairly frugal with my money. Like I don't blow a bunch of kit of cash on, I see people, you know, picking up like $50,000 dinner tabs and stuff like that. And I'm like, that will never be me. I'll never be that guy. So, um, I mean, you, you've seen people that like to spend money on others just to show like they have money too much. Oh. And it's crazy. Like I'm thinking, I'm like, where's the ROI? And I'm like, you barely know him. There's not going to be any business from us. Like, you're going to pay for yourself, fine, but it's not cool to keep paying for other people. Like, I think it's just foolish. It's hard to make money. It's easier to lose it or you just blow it. And it's not about, you got it right. It's not about living a fancy life. It's just about saving so you don't have to worry about living 10 years from now. Right. And that's, and that's like the, it's a big pro. I mean, like, actually having money is kind of a big problem because you, it's like, where do you do with it? Where do you put it? Because it's like everywhere you look, you can just lose it, you know, until you get some smart financial guys and, uh, you know, with tax incentives and all this other stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's not all great. It's it's great to have cash, don't get me wrong. But, you know, there comes a lot of responsibility with it. Otherwise, it, it can go really fast, especially I had this guy who wanted to do business with us. Um, this was like three years ago fly me and a couple other people out to Vegas and he took us like totally wine and dine us. Took us to all these shows and all this stuff and we had like front row seats, like probably spent fifty to seventy five grand in three days on me and my friends. And there was like three of us and you know my friends were like you know one of my friends was a, a good friend of mine from high school that i was just like hey do you want to go do this thing i don't know what this guy wants but whatever and he was just like blown away like dude that's unbelievable blah 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 and i'm like yeah i'm like listen like i'm really grateful for that but like i don't feel like i owe him anything you know like i'm really appreciative of that and it was really good to meet him but like that's nice and i appreciate it um and thanks for doing that but i don't feel any different about our business relationship Yep. It was fun. Yeah. I was talking to some guys that own an astrology business, and they're telling me someone does their paper first class to like Italy and Europe with them and their girlfriends. You know what I told them? I'm like, how much is this guy charging you to be willing to give you a free first class ticket? That guy's going to be awesome. I'm like, no, this means you're getting ripped off. <laughs> Dude, have you ever been to uh, Dubai or Abu Dhabi? I have. I go there quite often. Man, I've never been there. How do you go? What do you go there for? It's usually a good connecting spot. Like if I go to India, it's a good uh, hub. Just in general, it's a good hub. But I've stopped in Dubai too for like conferences, meetings. But they have yeah, like crazy got, showers on the plane. Oh man, I got the. Oh well, I heard their aircraft is ridiculous. Their Dubai Airlines stuff. But um, 
I've, I've been invited to speak there a long time ago, and I forget why it didn't work out, but I was so excited because, you know, me, I haven't even been to Europe unless you count the British Virgin Islands, but um, which doesn't shouldn't count. But no, so when I went, they put me up in like in a seven star hotel, right? I forgot what it was called, but at the time it was really popular. And I brought along two buddies. So this hotel is so picky. One, their buffet, like so expensive per person. I'm like, yeah, you could have just given me Taco Bell and I would have been happier. The food didn't even taste that great. And two, they charge you per person. So uh, I was like trying to pose every single question and try to convince the guy to let me go with an extra person without having to pay more. And they put me in a nice room. Like my room was probably like 1,800 to 2,000 square feet. At a upstairs and a downstairs separate bedroom. So I was just like, so if I met a girl at a club and she wanted to come home with me, you're telling me how I have to pay for the extra person. She's like, well, if she spent the night, yes, you have to pay us because she stayed in the hotel. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and I was just with two guys, and I was just like, what, one of the guys with me, I was like, oh, this is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, this is my wife. Because they were saying if it's your spouse, you don't have to pay. I'm like, well, I'm married to him. And I'm like, let him in for free now. Yeah, and then they'll behead you probably down there for that. <laughs> you can't be gay down there. I don't, I don't like that stuff. Are they, are they? He didn't charge me for the wife, even though he was a guy. Like, I just didn't care. I didn't want to pay the extra $300 a night to bring one of my friends with me. I'm like, this is silly. Okay, so I remember now. The conference in the in the what do you call them the the flyers or whatever they they send you for what you want like what you need you know as a speaker and on there it had at the bottom contact us if you require any companionship or recreational substances and I was like <laughs> um, that's hookers and blow right I mean like am I reading this right. Um, <laughs> So I, I talked to somebody else that was going there and they're like, yeah, dude, like, uh, that's a capital offense to have like a hooker in your stuff. And I'm like, uh, is that like normal? You know, like, <laughs> are you getting a hooker? Like, what's the deal here? You know, is my wife listening? You know, like, um, what, what's, what's the deal there with hookers and blow? Like, and they're, they're like, yeah, you get in big shit trouble. Um, if you do that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, was it really on my agenda, you know, to start with, but it's, I've never. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine me doing that with the leader tree, with with the speakers or sponsors being like, "Hey, if you if you want any companionship or cocaine, <laughs> talk, talk to me first. Speaking of that, man, we gotta have another leader tree. I've been see, I get sidelined with these companies and all these employees, and then I'm just like, ah. A leader tree's a lot of work. Yeah, it's you know what compared to what I'm doing though, it's not at all. I mean, compared, it's like. You know how it is. If it's something you really like doing, it's not work. Um, it, 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 so I think you've done you've done many awesome companies, but there's two models that I think you have spot on. Hey, look, my wife's here. She um she wants to say hi. Honey, you're being broadcasted to three thousand people. Oh hi, is that Neil? Yeah, yeah. Neil. how's the doctor doing? He said, "How's Neil, the doctor doing?" I remember when you were like little punk kid staying in her basement. <laughs> I took you down to Laszlo's for dinner. It was awesome. He, she can't hear you, but I can because I'm using my beast by Drake. Hey, the kids want to go eat. Can I take you down to Laszlo's or do you want me to wait for you? Um, Just, uh, just I'll meet you down there. Okay, we'll okay. head down there. I got about 10 minutes left. All right, no problem. All right, All right. love you, that. Neil. Right. Love you too. You, you made two awesome investments. One is in your wife. Do you remember the story you're talking about medical school? Right, I won't go into the details because I know it's personal, but I thought that was yeah, brilliant. That was, that was the best investment I ever made. Yeah, and, and you're, you're really easygoing, you know, husband. You don't make your wife work. She wants to work, but she left. She graduated medical school with no bills, and that was, like, really smart. And then the next smart thing you did, of course, was she's, I believe she's an anesthesiologist, correct? Mm -hmm. And in Lincoln, which is... There's not too many out there, so which is a great place. But um, the other thing that you're doing right now, which I think is smart, you're well known in the affiliate community. If you can find more people who just want to need money to get to seventy grand a month, and you just cash flow. I'm like, that's a smart model. Why not just keep doing that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's there's relatively low risk because we do a scaling model. You know, like I don't start with seventy grand a day. You know, and and well, first of all, they run through my affiliate accounts because. Even though they tell me they're getting the highest payouts, you well, can probably get you know, higher payouts. 
<laughs> yeah, I can just I can just say, well, who, who's it running through? Okay, it's running through Never Blue. Okay, let me hit up whatever. Hey, I need a higher payout on this. You're like, let me hit up the owner. <laughs> You're like, yeah. we got ten percent more payouts. <laughs> yeah, that's how it. Honestly, that's how it's gone every time. And I'm like, look, these guys are at this now. I'm going to fund them, and I just want to know this. So where are we? Where can we go with this? You know, and they'll you know to the you know they know me so. And, you know, honestly, like a lot of them, like with you, just want to say Shimani uses us, Neil Patel uses us, you know. I've seen, I've seen your logo on so many sites seen on Quicksprout, as seen on Quicksprout. And I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Actually, somebody had an seen on Shimani. They had that the other day. And I was like, that's cool. I think it was like the Hoth, one of those things. You know what I remember? The Shimani shirts. Remember how you used to have so many people take pictures of the shirts and there would be all, all those pictures would be all over the web? That was awesome. I know. It's like we all grew up and we all got away from like <laughs> I, I'm still a kid, man. I, I still, I'm the most, I'm, I'm pretty, I mean, I have with kids and stuff, you can't help it. Now I'm, I'm up at like 5, 6 a.m. every morning. Um, I take my kids to school. I eat lunch with them when I can, and which is quite often, but yeah, I mean, man, we we had our time though, and we definitely lived it up. You were you're like at least ten years younger than me, though, aren't you? I'm forty two. I'm thirty one. Eleven years younger. Okay, all right. I I knew because I remember. I think I bought you a beer, and I don't think you were twenty one, and I did not know that. I forget. It's, that might be right. Maybe no, I, probably not right. After, I met you after I was twenty one. Okay. We've known each other for like nine, nine, ten years almost. Yeah, I mean, it's well, it's 2016, dude, and we've got pictures from 2005. So and then the beer um, story, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, you were you were getting to get off the the quick sprout. You were late sprout in the beer. Yeah, yeah, it's um, oh, some interesting stuff. Well, dude, we're kind of we're kind of winding down here. So for all those. All those uh, listeners, you know, they're a lot of them are just getting started. A lot of them are doing kind of probably the same questions you always get and know and love like I do. Um, it's just, you know, what I try to do is just instead of asking like what your number one tip for because that's like so hard to answer. But just like from things you've learned and all that you've seen, is there any sort of like, I guess, like what if you've got these traits in yourself, then you should pursue looking into making a living on the Internet. Or if you don't, you shouldn't. And it, the thing that I learned is, it's like, on the internet, I see these guys graduating from like Harvard and Stanford. There's nothing wrong with these schools. Some of my best friends have gone there. And they're like, oh, I'm really smart. I'm gonna crush it, make a ton of money. And I even get these people who are like, I graduated from Harvard. I should be making more than the other person who doesn't have a college degree. Well, the other person over there is hustling and trying to figure out how to make money. If you can figure out how to do things on your own, grow and help. Just build a business, whether it's someone else's or your own, and you're just going to figure out how to get things done even when the odds are stacked against you. Like if someone's trying to charge you guys way too much and it's not on your budget, but yet you're still able to figure out how to get it done without spending a dollar, like you have it in yourself to be an entrepreneur or at least do something on the web. It just comes down to being scrappy. You don't have to be technical. Amen, brother. And that's why, like a lot of people, you when you talk to people, you're like, "What? What were you doing?" Oh, I was you selling used cars. You know, I mean, a lot, a lot of them. If you're a hustler, you're a hustler, and that's where shoe money comes from, man. I, uh, I always was a hustler, and I was always able to make money. Not, not a ton, to but the, skills to pay the bills. Skills to pay the bills, baby. I've always been hustling. Neil, do you know when you're the best internet marketer in the world? Do you know what they call you? Because it's not the best internet marketer. What they call the best internet marketer in the world, or who? Yeah. Do you know what they call you when you're the best internet marketer in the world? I have no idea. They call you Shoe Money. So. <laughs> I love it. Come on, you didn't see that coming. They, actually, nobody ever seen that coming. But they might, <laughs> but they don't want to say it. All right, brother. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming on, and uh, let's work together and conquer Latin America together. That's good. I'm down. I'm Thanks, down man. if you want to. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. That was Neil Patel, one of my good friends. Thank him so much for coming on. Um, this is the second of our new series of, of uh, video casts. Um, again, thanks to Beats by Dre. We'll have more on those contests coming up. We're also going to have – we've got two more sponsors. 
um, signed and we're just getting ready to take them on and that's going to be awesome because it's going to allow us to do some really uh, additional cool things and stuff like that. So um, make sure you join the next one and um, you can also, the cool thing about why we use um, Webinar Jam is you can automatically subscribe to future ones and then you don't have to actually even register. You're just automatically there and if you want to show up, you show up and then you get access to the replays and stuff like that. So everybody, thank you so much for attending and we will see you next week.